Hi, I'm Travis Elliott with National Control Devices. I'm going to be doing a series of videos on frequently asked questions to help solve some of the problems that you may be having with our products. Over the next few months, we're going to release quite a few of these. There's going to be some Camtasia videos that show you how to do things with programming software. Then there'll be some of these live video v videos with me. A lot of these videos are going to be <clears throat> <clears throat> streamlined and uh, just for me to show you how to solve problems that you may be having. One of the main problems a lot of our customers have is induction. That's why I'm doing this first video on it. Induction is voltage spikes that we call EMI that come back from devices that are attached to our controllers. These voltage spikes can cripple communications from the controller to the computer and it causes these problems and they're, they're just really big headaches and it's, it's really frustrating for customers because the device will work one time, maybe three times and then just quit working and it's, you don't know why. So a lot of times that's induction. If you have something like this attached to it, inductive devices could be anything that creates motion electronically like a motor or solenoid or a valve or a pump. Other things that may be inductive would be fluorescent lighting or transformers. So these are just some common things that cause induction but there are a lot of things out there that do it. What I'm going to use today in my setup, I have a power source here. This is just a cable that's been plugged into an AC outlet that I have on a switch. So I just have a power and a neutral here. I just clipped the ground back because I'm not going to use it. I have a UAD R410 Pro XR. This is a four relay controller using USB communications. And then I have a little aquatic pump here. This little pump is 120 volts AC and it pulls less than an amp. Even though it's a really small device, it still causes enough induction to just wreak havoc on our communications. So I'm going to use it to demonstrate it today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate induction and then I'm going to show you that and then I'm going to show you how to fix it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get things wired up here and I'll show you what's going on. First off, I'm going to take the neutral line off my pump and I'm going to attach it to the normally open terminal on relay 4. Okay, so we'll just put that in there and then screw terminal it down. Be sure and reference the manual for your particular controller to see which screw terminal goes to what, what's, no, what's the common, the normally closed and the normally open. Now I'm going to take the neutral from my power source and I'm going to attach it to the common of the relay. Meaning whenever this relay comes on, it's going to bridge these two wires together, essentially turning my pump on and off. Now I'm just going to hardwire my power connection, my power supply connection, and my pump power. I'm just wiring up those together for now. So now we've got everything wired up here. Everything looks like it's good to go. Connections all look good, no loose wires, nothing's touching. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn everything on here. And I'm going to start up the Pro XR software. And I'm just going to use this to test the controller. You'll need to select your COM port here. You can find that in the device manager of your computer. Find out which COM port is communicating to the controller you have attached. And then put it in right here in this drop down menu. Then I'm going to select Pro XR because, as I said, this is a Pro XR controller. So now we'll just click OK. The log window is going to go through, it's just communicating to the device, find out if it has A to D inputs, how many relays, things of that nature. Okay, now I'm going to turn a relay on and off. And that seems to be working good, meaning we have good communications, okay, so we can move forward. Now I'm going to turn relay 4 on and off, and I'm going to show you what induction does here. So I've got Relay 4 on and I've got my pump on and it looks like it's working fine. You might walk away and think, well, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, if you turn this on and off a few times, eventually you're going to run into problems here. And there it just froze up. The button went gray 
and it's switching around and I just lost communication. It, it looks like a bug. What that actually is, is voltage spikes came out of this pump, traveled back through this wire into the controller, got into the USB chip on this controller, back to the USB line, all the way back to my computer. When the computer sensed those voltage spikes coming in through that input, it just shut it off because it doesn't want to damage that input. So now it looks like it's not working, and it's not working because of the induction. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this apart, and I'm going to show you how to fix this with a capacitor. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and shut off my Pro XR software here. And close all that down, and leave the title screen up. And then I'm going to turn off power to my device and my controller using this switch here. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a capacitor to absorb these spikes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wire this two-legged capacitor in line with my pump. And whenever those spikes come through, this capacitor is going to grab those spikes and it's going to hold them and it's not going to let anything go through. It's going to regulate the current coming back into the controller. So that's basically what we need. We need to get rid of those spikes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this wire nut here off, and I'm just going to stick one leg of the capacitor in there. So essentially, I'm connecting this capacitor to the power leg of my pump and also the power leg of the power supply. You don't have to do that. As long as you get on the power leg of the pump, it should work fine. Okay. Make sure we've got good connections there, everything looks okay. Now I'm going to disconnect my normally open terminal, which is the neutral to my pump. Now, I need to get this capacitor in here with that line so I can connect the two together. All right, looks like my capacitor just came out of here. Let's try and put that back in there again, try and get a little better connection here. Okay, that's better. All right, now we're going to take the neutral line from our pump and the other leg of the capacitor. We're going to put them both into that normally open terminal on our relay controller, essentially connecting the two together so that that capacitor is able to absorb those spikes. And we get everything in there and we'll screw it back down. There's a wiring diagram of how to do this exactly what I just did here on our website. If you go to our website, on the left side there's a list of menus. There's a red one all the way up at the top that says resources. If you scroll over that, a little menu will pop up next to it and there's a red button in that little menu that says induction suppression. Click on that and there's a schematic of how to do this, just what I did. Okay, It'll walk you through it and give you a little drawing of how to do that. So now I've got everything reconnected here. All my connections look good, no wires are touching. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my power back on. And then I'm gonna restart the ProXR software, select my COM port and my device and click OK. It's gonna run through here, do its communications. And here I can switch on and off Relay 1, meaning I've got good communications. Now let's try Relay 4 and let's see if we corrected our problem with our induction. Seems to be working. Switched on and off a few times. Make sure that we have in fact solved our problem. And it looks like we have. Okay. And that's how you fix induction with a capacitor. Um, pretty simple stuff really. Just a a little bit of wiring, a little bit of research, do your reading. Um, I don't necessarily recommend, if you know that you're going to be controlling inductive devices, I don't recommend a USB controller because the communications are very fragile with it. I would recommend something more like a serial controller or fiber optics controller. Reason being, they do a better job of suppressing the induction themselves rather than having to use capacitors. Sometimes you will still have to use capacitors with serial. Fiber optics are really good though because you're, you're flashing lights for your communication. There's no hard wire for that voltage spike to get back through because it's just a light channel. So that's ideal. If all you have is USB port on your computer, you can do a setup like I've done here. 
and see if it works for you. It should correct the problem. If it doesn't, try a larger capacitor. We sell these capacitors on our website. They're also available at Radio Shack. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do a lot more of these videos, and I encourage you to watch them, and I encourage you to learn about our products. And don't forget to read the manuals and the articles on our website. They're very helpful, and they'll get you through a lot of problems by themselves. If you have further questions, you can always contact me, Travis Elliott, here at National Control Devices by our phone line or through email. My email is travis at controlanything.com. If you have questions, feel free to send me emails. Um, that's my video on induction here, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.